Dirk, do you want to please give the EU standpoint on the issues? The ECB has been very vocal uh, light, lately, so we'll, we'll uh, eager to hear from you about future uh, tokenized euro or, or, or some other type of digital currency. Thank you. First of all, the, the ECB is exploring the matter. I think that should be, should be, should be clear. We are, we are doing uh, theoretical research, but we are also doing practical experimentation. And uh, we look at what we call wholesale CBDC, and we also look at retail general purpose CBDC. Wholesale CBDC, so that, that means CBDC that is actually only accessible to financial institutions, means CBDC that is uh, exchanged via central bank-owned payment systems. So the underlying question is, can we move our own payment systems to DLT? So this is the, actually what, what it comes down to when you speak about wholesale CBDC. And, and we, we, are, we are exploring this. We've been exploring this since 2016 with the colleagues from Bank of Japan, Project Stella. If you're interested, there are a couple of reports uh, on our ECB website. Um, and I think even if we say it from today's perspective, this is the, the standard response, from today's perspective, uh, the technology is not yet ready for prime time uh, because we offer the backbone of the financial sector, it's a large-scale application, but we also see many developments, that is, it evolves very fast. So uh, I think there's, uh, there's a lot of um, positive aspects to, to blockchain and maybe it's only a matter of time when it's ready. So then we have the retail CBDC, and that is, uh, this is the most complicated discussion, of course. Um, for me, actually, it, it boils down to three key questions. Why? As uh, Yuko already hinted to, to that. And uh, why should we do that? What is the motivation? Second question is, what should the design precisely look like? And the third question is, how to implement? So is the why what? How? The, the why, from a European perspective, is tricky. Because you're, you're often confronted with statements when you speak about central bank digital currency. The statement is, it's... It's needed because you need efficient payment systems. But do we really need efficient, more efficient payment systems in Europe? You always need more efficient payment systems, no doubt. But we have already very efficient payment systems. Uh, example is what, what we uh, built and, and implemented in, in November 2018, the target instant payment settlement. You have an infrastructure you can settle in the, in the fraction of a second for a fraction of a euro cent. Fine. It's, it's there. So the question, is there a motivation from this angle? Second question is then, oh yeah, but cash is in decline, no? Uh, looking at the whole euro area, maybe it will change, most probably it will change. When you look at my children, it will change, I guess. But uh, uh, the, the growth of banknotes in circulation still outpaces GDP growth. 79% of all point-of-sales transactions are cash-based in Europe. So, okay, in the Nordics it's different compared to the South and to Germany, for example, where, where the ECB is located. And, but then the also the argument is, oh yes, but uh, crypto assets are gaining ground and stable coins now being, being uh, on the horizon. But here, we, we've, we've studied this uh, over the last couple of years. We published reports in 2012, 2015, and now also in 2019. We have been consistent in, in saying market capitalization of crypto assets is still relatively low. It's around about 1% of euro area GDP. And we also say that uh, the links to the real economy are developing, but also not that uh, to a large extent. So, there's no impact on, from today's perspective, uh, and obviously only speak about today, uh, perspective on, uh, on, our, on our central bank role functioning and mandate. So, is there a real motivation? Difficult, difficult to find a good motivation from our perspective. Then the, the second question, and this is what keeps us busy at the moment, is the what. How it, uh, what, what uh, design features? Should it be anonymous? Wonderful question. Should it be interest-bearing? Uh, should there be limits? And we are exploring this theoretically, but we also do experiments. We now finished just an experiment where we explored to what extent the anti-money laundering directive requirements could be met by, by um, CBDC, which is, which is put on a blockchain. Uh, very interesting, but we need to understand this in detail before we can, can go in, in one direction or the other. And what is also a bit um, maybe underexplored at the moment is, I think, the cross-border dimension, because you have different design features, and then, okay, you, can, you always look at your own jurisdiction. Uh, this, what, what do you want? What do you need? But then we would also need to look at the cross-border implications. Can we somehow, or do we want to, control uh, the flow of, of this CBDC outside our own borders or not? This is also a question which has not been discussed much. So this is 
the why, the what, and the how. Okay, this is the question whether DLT is the answer. And uh, this is what we uh, have been exploring. And as I said, from today's perspective, it's difficult. But there's a plethora of questions we have to analyze before really coming to conclusions. And we are looking at all these things in detail. We have a dedicated team looking at this in the, in the, in the ECB, uh, even if we're not particularly vocal on this uh, compared to other central banks, but uh, we've been doing a lot in the past.